A year after Disneyland opened, it finally started to allow guests onto Tom Sawyer's Island. It was the summer of 1956. The island featured small trails, some activities, but had yet to become fully realized. It did, however, feature fishing in the rivers of America. After traveling over on a raft, guests would head over to the eastern dock of the island, where there was a small shed called Huckleberry Finn's Fishing Pier. There, they could borrow a fishing pole where they could hook a Disneyland catfish. A small netted area around the pier was filled with fish just for the guest experience. After you caught a fish, you could take it over to Aunt Jemima's Pancake House, where they would ice the fish for the remainder of the day just for you. However, most guests failed to bring their fish to the restaurant, and quickly the park began to reek of rotting fish, as guests would hold on to the carcass or abandon them randomly throughout Disneyland. The shed closed, and fishing in the rivers of America was scrapped after just under a month. Eventually, the dock changed, and the shed turned into a bathroom. But by 2007, Tom Sawyer's Island was about to change itself. Due to the success of Pirates of the Caribbean franchise, the island was altered and expanded in Disneyland to coincide with the release of the third film. Pirates Lair on Tom Sawyer's Island features props and set pieces reminiscent of the Pirates film series, with Smuggler's Cove, Will Turner's Blacksmith Shop, and The Dead Man's Chest. In 1992, the dock would see new usage when it was used in Disneyland's new nighttime spectacular called The Fantasmic. The show used several special effects and high-tech water equipment, which reportedly killed the remainder of the fish in the lake. Although, some gators have been spotted in the Disney World counterpart. Fishing at Walt Disney World in Orlando, Florida has always been easier. Guests have been allowed to use ponds and lakes to catch fish, but they've also offered fishing excursions in Seven Seas Lagoon and Bay Lake, all conjoining resorts have at one time had a fishing package. But there was always one rule. To preserve the delicate fish population, one is well advised to relinquish a catch back to the water. Fishing in Walt Disney World was about to become increasingly more difficult after a tragic incident. It was just after 9 p.m. at the Grand Floridian Resort and Spa, just across from Disney's Magic Kingdom. The Graves family of four from Nebraska, three days into their vacation, enjoying the sandy beach. Lane standing in ankle deep water when the five to seven foot alligator emerged and attacked him. The theme park was built on top of swampland that had been drained. The resort complex itself is almost 25,000 acres, and Disney guaranteed a quarter of its land would always be a nature preserve when it first purchased it. Disney says alligators are closely monitored by a full time staff and removed from the park if they become too big or too bold. No fishing signs have gone up at Saratoga Springs Resort and Spa, the Fort Wilderness Campground, and the Old Key West Resort. The only time guests can fish if, it, if, if it's with or part of a guided excursion. Now, in addition, netting has been added to the rope fences at the shore of Seven Seas Lagoon. Signs were posted throughout the property, and guests were prohibited from fishing in areas they were previously allowed. Disney World needed to admit it had a gator problem. It removed some shrubs and parade characters. They even went so far as to change Mickey's Royal Friendship Fair Show to not include Louie from Princess and the Frog until late 2016. The TikTok float had to be sunk, and a few skippers had to bite their tongues on the Jungle Cruise refraining from crocodile jokes. But now that Disney World has mostly excursion fishing, it's nice to reminisce on the memory of a catch at Tom Sawyer's Island, even if you just release it.